Hello everyone, welcome to today's video. Today's video is about how to write a manuscript in uh, seven days or one week. Uh, with you, Associated Prof. Dr. Hassanin Faisal Ghazi, Public Health Specialist. And today, uh, video is based on this book, which is How to Write a Research Manuscript in One Week. This book explains in a simple and practical way how researcher can write their manuscript in one week. It's designed for beginners and researchers who do not have experience in writing and publication. We will put the link of uh, Amazon under this video so you can buy this book. And also there is a competition uh, for this book, uh, for this video. Uh, under the, uh, this uh, video, you can see all the competition uh, terms and conditions. And we are giving away some uh, e-book uh, copy of this book. So, uh, most scientific journal, they follow the design which is the, called MRAD, which is Introduction, Method, Result, and Discussion. This is the most common use in scientific publications. So, if you want to write your manuscript in one week, what you need? First, you need your objective of the research. Of course, you need the method, including the data collections, how you collect the data, definition of variables, all these things. Uh, your data should be analyzed, of course, either by SPSS or any other statistical software. And, of course, your literature review. Literature review, you can get it from your research proposal. Okay, what is the most important part of any manuscript is the abstract, table and figures, and conclusion. Why? Because when you submit your paper for publication, the editor-in-chief will look for these three parts particularly. Especially the abstract, if your abstract is good, your table, the data analyzes correct, and your conclusion is solid, then he will decide to send your paper for review, and then your paper can be accepted for publication. So, let's start with our uh, uh, seven days uh, workflow. For the first day, you need to start writing the methods. Why we choose the methods in the first day? Because we already collected the data we already finished the method, so everything is ready. So it is the easiest part to start writing is the methods. Usually the method part is around 200 to 400 words. Okay, what about day two? Day two, we start to write tables and figures. So we put our data that we analyze in the tables and figures. Of course, most of the journal accept around four to five tables. They don't like too many tables and figures. Especially some journals, they have even some color charts for figures. So try to minimize the number of tables and figures to the most important findings of your research. Then on day three, you describe the result. So the most important part is no need to explain each table in detail, only the headlines. So like this example, the percentage of female were 70%. So once you put that the female 70%, no need to say and there's 30% of male because it is already very clear. And the result part is usually 500 to 1,000 words. Then on day four, you write the introduction or some journal they call the background. Usually you introduce your topic, what we know, what we don't know, what your topic will add to the knowledge. Uh, body of knowledge, it's about three to four paragraphs. 100 to 200 words to introduce your topic, 500 to 1,000 literature review, what people they did in the past, and the most important, the last paragraph of the introduction should be the main objective uh, of the general objective of the study. And usually you can put up to 10 references in the introduction parts, no need to put more introduction, uh, more references in the introduction. Okay, so this is day four, then we go to day five, which is the discussion usually consists of three to four paragraphs. The range of the words is around 500 to 1,000. The first paragraph is about study main findings. The second paragraph regarding study limitation. The third and fourth, you compare your result with the previous study. Of course, you can compare with study agree with you and also with the study that disagree with your findings. Then, day six, we write the conclusion and references. Conclusions are around 200 words. Usually, it is three to four sentences. 
and or, of course the references you, it's depend on the journal format some journal they use APA style some use uh, Harvard some they use Vancouver so you need to follow the uh, reference uh, style of the journal even some journal they put you the maximum number of reference you can put in your manuscript some journal they're asking about 40 some asking about maximum of 50 references depend on the journal uh, format and you can find this under the instruction for authors Okay, the last day you need to write the abstract and title. Why we keep the abstract and title to the last day? Because it is the most two important things in the manuscript. And actually the abstract and title, they can decide whether your paper will be accepted or no. Because when you send to the journal, the editor-in-chief will look for the abstract because the abstract is just a summary of the whole uh, paper. So he will go, he will see what is the methods, main findings, conclusion, and also the title, is your title is catchy or no? Um, is it something in you, novel, not done, not, not done before? So it will decide whether a paper will be accepted or no. That's why uh, regarding the title, you need to be written at the last, you need to revise it many times, make it simple and catchy. This is the most important. So this is in the seven days. So we just repeated in flowchart. For day one, we talk about, we write the methods part. The day two is tables and figures. Day three is the result part. Day four is introduction or the background. Day five is the discussion. Day six is conclusion and references. And the last day, which is day seven, is we write the abstract and the title. If you have any question, you can uh, put it in the, in the comments below this video. Thank you for being with us.